Hi guys! So, this will be the second part of my lecture on accounting for income taxes. To, to refresh, yung first part ng video ko, discussion proper siya ng accounting for income taxes. Pagdating dito sa second video natin, applications naman. Ia-apply natin yung mga diniscuss ko kanina sa first video dito sa second video natin. Okay? So, Sasagutan natin ay four problems. So, dito muna tayo sa first problem natin. For the first problem, during the current year, Wilkins Company reported accounting income of 9 million before tax. Company revealed the following information for the current year. So, ayan. Given sa atin ay iba-ibang items ng income. Num uh, then, there will be six requirements. How much is the income subject to tax? How much is the taxable income? How much is the current tax expense? Total income tax expense? Deferred tax liability? And deferred tax asset? Now, para masagutan natin itong numbers 1 to 6 natin, dapat alam na natin kung sino yung mga permanent and temporary differences natin. Okay? Now, ang tip ko lang sa inyo, pag once na-identify nyo ng mga permanent differences, yung iba, Puro temporary difference na siya. Okay? Sige. So, doon sa listahan na binigay sa atin yung interest income until uh, income tax rate, aalamin lang natin kung sino yung mga permanent and temporary difference. Okay? Sige. So, let's start. Interest income. That is a permanent difference. Life insurance premium. O. Oh. Ano nga ulit ang sinabi ko nung nasa first video? Pagdating sa uh, insurance premium, titignan nyo muna kung sino yung beneficiary para masabi natin kung permanent or hindi. Di ba? Now, pag ang company ang naging beneficiary ng insurance policy, ano ang consideration natin kay insurance premium? Permanent or hindi? Answer, permanent difference siya. Okay? Now, in this problem, who is the beneficiary? It is the company itself. Therefore, the life insurance premium is considered to be a permanent difference. Next, tax penalties and surcharges. Permanent difference yan. Nasa listahan natin siya kanina. Okay? Oh, depreciation, rental payments, provisions, warranty, advance collections. These are normal income and expense items. Therefore, mga puro temporary differences na yan. Okay? Sige. So, let's start. Income subject to tax, taxable income. Isang table lang gagamitin ko para sa dalawang ito. Unahin na muna natin si income subject to tax. So, pag tinanong tayo ng income subject to tax, ang i-account nyo muna would be the accounting income and permanent differences. Okay? How much is your accounting income? 9 million. Oh, doon sa tatlong permanent difference na na-identify natin, sino doon yung non-taxable revenue? Diba si interest income? So, lagay natin under non-taxable revenue siya. Since nakabilang or nasali siya sa pag-compute ng income, kailangan natin i-deduct kasi walang tax consequence na yung interest income. Next, Non-deductible expenses. Yung last two items natin, na-identify na nating non-deductible expenses. Tama? So, ano yon? Yung life insurance premium, kasi yung company yung beneficiary. And ano isa? Tax penalties and surcharges. So, magkano ang total non-deductible expenses natin? 1, 40,000. Pag non-deductible expenses, in the first place kasi nakadeduct, i-add back natin siya. Kasi wala siyang tax consequence. Gets? So, magkano ang income subject to tax natin? 8,440,000. That's for your number one. Number two, taxable income. Pag taxable income na ang tinatanong, after considering the permanent differences, ang susunod na i-consider, temporary differences. Nandyan sila future taxable amounts and future deductible amounts. O. Oh, temporary difference tayo. Ano yung first item after the tax penalties and surcharges kanina? 
depreciation. Diba? Now, dalawang items yung depreciation. Per income tax return, per accounting records. Question ko, alin dyan sa dalawang depreciation ang naisali sa pag-compute ng accounting income? That is, the depreciation per accounting records. Magkano yan? 1.4 million. E kaso, magkano yung depreciation sa ITR? 2.7 million. Sino masusunod sa dalawa? Si accounting o si tax? Anong sabi ko kanina sa first video? Si tax palagi ang bida. Therefore, dapat sinusundan natin yung nasa ITR. O, magkano yung na-record na depreciation? 1.4. Magkano yung depreciation dapat na nakadedak na? 2.7. Therefore, kailangan natin magdedak ng additional depreciation. O, magdededak. Saan ko ilalagay yung mga dinededak? Future taxable, future deductible. Answer, future taxable. Okay? Lahat ng dinededak nating temporary differences from income subject to tax, ilalagay natin under future taxable amount. Then, lahat ng ia-add natin, future deductible amounts. Gets? Yan lang tatandaan nyo. Pag future taxable amount, deduct. Pag future deductible, add. Okay? Sige. After depreciation, ano ang given? Rental payments made in advance. Oh, anong tawag natin sa mga payment in advance? Di ba mga prepayments ito or prepaid expenses? Saan natin nire-record ang mga prepayments? Di ba assets? Tapos in the future, magiging expenses siya. Tama? That is under accounting. Pero ang sabi ni tax, baliktad. Oh, nagbayad ka na. Dapat, idedak mo na yan. Di ba? So, sino masusunod? Tax pa rin. Kailangan natin mag-deduct. O, oh, deduct. Saan ko ilalagay itong rental payment in advance? That is, future taxable amount. Kasi nakadedak siya eh. Di ba? Sir, ano nga ulit concept? Bakit mo dinedak yung prepaid rent? Di ba under accounting nasa asset natin yan? Kaso sabi ni, ni tax, nagbayad ka, dapat expense na yan. So, nag-record tayo ng expense. Okay? Next. Provision for probable losses. Oh. Ano ba ang treatment natin sa mga provisions natin? Di ba, nagre-record agad tayo ng probable losses dyan. Di ba? So, under accounting, nagre-record na tayo ng loss kahit wala pang lumalabas na pera. Pero, ang sabi naman ni tax, ay, 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 bawal yan i-deduct dahil wala ka pang nilabas na pera. I-deduct lang natin yan kapag may nilabas kang pera. Sino masusunod? Accounting, tax, si tax. So, in the first place, nakasali na yan sa accounting income eh, as a form of expense. Pero since ayaw pang tanggapin ni tax, kailangan nating i-add back. O, i-add back, saan ko ilalagay? Future deductible amounts. Yung loss provision natin. Okay? Nakuha, lahat ng addition, future deductibles. Next, warranty expense, dalawa. Warranty expense, accrual basis, 600,000. Actual warranty payment, 200,000. Alin dito ang nasali natin sa pag-compute or pag-determine ng accounting income? That is, accrual basis, warranty expense. Pero, ano sabi ni tax? Ay, 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 bawal pa i-deduct yan kasi wala pa tayong nilalabas na pera. Magde-deduct lang tayo kapag may nilabas ng pera. Tama? Now, may nilabas ba tayong pera with regard to your warranty? Answer, yes. The next the next uh, line, actual warranty payment amounting to 200,000. Out of the 600,000 warranty expense, ang tatanggapin lang ni tax na expense for now ay yung 200,000. So yung difference na 400,000, kailangan natin yan i-add back. Therefore, ilalagay ko yan under future deductible amounts. Excess warranty ang tawag ko dyan. Okay? Kasi in, uh, in the future pa yan, report as expenses under tax. Okay? Last one. Advanced collections from customers. 200,000. Under accounting sa natin 
nilalagay ang advance collection under unearned income or liability. Pero, the fact remains na nakatanggap ka na ng pera. Tama? Anong sabi ni tax? Pag nakatanggap kang pera, matik income. Okay? Na-report ba natin yan sa accounting income in the first place? Answer, hindi pa. Pero pinapareport na ng tax. Therefore, kailangan natin mag-add. So, dahil mag-add, future deductible amount ang lagay. Gets? Okay. So, magkano na yung total future deductible amounts natin? 700,000. Total future taxable, yung kanina, 1.7 million. So, how much is your taxable income? Our answer for number 2, 7,440,000. So, that would be your answer for number 2. Okay? Ayan na, may, may future taxable amounts, may future deductible amounts na tayo. Number 3, how much is the current tax expense? Paano natin kinocompute ang current tax expense? The formula, taxable income times current tax rate. So, magkano taxable income natin? 7,440,000 times what is the tax rate? 30% which is not expected to change in the future. So, wala tayong problema dito. You will just multiply 7.44 million by 30%. So, magkano ang current tax expense natin? 2,232,000. That's your answer for number 3. Number 4, how much is your total income tax expense? Tandaan nyo, Hindi equal ang current at total kasi mas malawak ang total tax kesa sa current tax. Tandaan nyo, may temporary differences tayo. Kaya mas malawak itong total tax expense natin. Sige. Now, paano natin kinocompute ang total tax expense? Ito lang ang tip ko sa inyo. Pag isa lang ang tax rate sa problem, isa lang ang tax rate which is Hindi, pa, uh, hindi na in-expect na magbabago ito in the future, our formula would be income subject to tax times tax rate. Di ba yung current tax expense natin kanina nakabase sa siya taxable income? Ang total tax naman nakabase siya sa total, uh, total income subject to tax. So, magkano total income tax natin? 8,440,000 times 30%, our answer for number 4, 2,532,000. Number 5 and number 6, deferred tax liability, deferred tax asset. Okay. Sa first video natin, na discuss ko na kung saan natin binabase yung Deferred tax liability, deferred tax asset. Tama? Pag deferred tax liability, ano nagiging basihan niya? Future taxable amount. Diba? So, for deferred tax liability, that is 1.7 million times 30%. Our answer for number 5, 510,000. Next, for the deferred tax asset, Ano naman ang basihan ng deferred tax asset? Future deductible amount. Ito kasi mga future benefits pa ito na marirealize in the future. Di ba? So, magkano ang magiging deferred tax asset natin? 700,000 times 30%, 210,000. So, that will be your answer for number 6. Alright? So, yung first problem natin, pinakita sa atin kapag magkapareho lang yung current and future tax rates. Next, journal entries tayo. Journal entries natin. To journalize the current tax liability, we will debit income tax expense and credit income tax payable. Deferred tax liability, tandaan nyo, kapag may deferred tax liability, ini-increase na natin yung income tax expense. Kumbaga, para siyang accrued expense. 
ire-report mo na expense ngayon, pero yung liability in the future pa siya. Okay? So, debit income tax expense, credit, deferred tax, liability. And as to deferred tax asset, parang mag a ka na ng income dito. Except that, yung expense ang ginagalaw natin. Kasi related siya sa tax expense. Di ba? Deferred tax asset, 210 credit income tax expense. Okay? Oh. Tapos na natin yung original case. Independent case or case number 2. What if the expected tax rate for future years is 35%? How much should be the total tax expense? How much should be the deferred tax liability? How much should be the deferred tax asset? All right? Yan na lang ang tatanungin sa atin dito. Now, paano natin makukompute ang total tax expense kung this time magkaiba na yung current and future tax rates? Well, hindi na natin pwedeng gamitin yung formula na binigay ko kanina. Kasi magkaiba na yung tax rate eh. So, paano natin gagawin yung computation this time? Mamanuhin na natin. Paano yung mano? Magsisimula tayo sa current income tax expense, which is still the same. Ibabase pa rin siya sa taxable income and using current tax rate. Okay? Wala, wala tayong problema sa current tax expense. Talagang wala tayong problema dyan. Ang pagkakaproblema lang is yung deferred tax, liability, and deferred tax asset natin. Kasi, ang gagamitin natin this time, future tax rates for them. O, oh, add creation of deferred tax liability, that is 1.7 million times 35%, that's the future tax rate. Then, deduct creation of deferred tax asset. 700,000 times 35%, 245,000. So, this time, magkano na ang total tax expense natin? 2,582,000. So, number one, our answer, 2,582,000. Number 2, 595,000. Number 3, 245,000. Ayan. Okay na tayo. Okay? So, ang tatandaan nyo lang, ang measurement ng current tax natin ay palaging current tax rate. Pero pagdating sa deferred tax, enacted future rates na. Enacted or future tax rates. Okay? Okay? So, we are done with your problem number one. Let's move on to the concept of the creation and reversal of deferred taxes. Diba kanina nakita nyo, ginagamit ko na yung term na creation of DTL and creation of DTA. Pag sinabi kasi natin creation, nadadagdagan yung balance ng deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset. Pero pag sinabi yung reversal, meaning nare-realize na sila unti-unti. So, nababawasan yung account natin. Okay. So, ang focus natin dito, ano bang nagpapakreate sa mga deferred taxes? Di ba yung future taxable at future deductible amounts? Okay. Creation muna tayo. Kapag ang future taxable amount tumataas yan throughout the period, well, it will create deferred tax liability. Anong effect niya sa income tax expense, mag increase Okay? Pero kapag FDA or future deductible amount naman ang nakikreate, tumataas ang deferred tax asset natin, pero baliktad ang nangyayari sa income tax expense, bumababa naman siya. Okay? That's for the creation. Paano pag nag-reverse na? Meaning, bumababa na yung future taxable amount. So, pag bumaba ang future taxable amount, Baba din ang deferred tax liability. Bababa din ang income tax expense. Bakit nga ba ulit bumaba ang income tax expense? Kasi nai-report na siya dati. Kapag hindi mo kasi siya pinababa, double expense ang mare-report. Okay? Then for the reversal of future deductible amount, bababa na yung deferred tax asset natin pero tataas ang income tax expense. Why? Kasi yung benefit na i-report mo na dati. So ngayon, marirealize mo na yung yung benefit na yon, di ba? 
Kaya, tumaas yung income tax expense. Alright? Ayan ang concept ng ating creation and reversal. Oh, second problem. Estes Company reported pre-tax net income of 5 million for the year 2018. Included in the determination of the said income were as follows. Ayan ulit, may permanent and temporary tayo. Okay, sa permanent, wala tayong problema dyan. Palaging alam natin tinatanggal na natin yan. Kasi wala naman siyang tax consequence, di ba? Pero ang problem, dalawa yung temporary difference na given. Temporary difference at the beginning and temporary difference at the end. The income tax rate is 40%, which is nag-iisa lang siya. Tinatanong tayo, how much is the current tax expense? How much is the total tax expense? Deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability. Okay? Ayan. Sige. So, pagdating natin dito sa number 2 natin, ulit, ano lang muna natin, uulitin natin yung table natin kanina, di ba? From accounting income, i-convert ko yan into taxable income. Di ba? Pareho lang naman ang, ang ano natin dito, ang magiging concept natin. So, tinanggal ko kaagad yung permanent difference natin. How much is your income subject to tax? 5.1 million. So, focus tayo sa temporary differences. Now, for the temporary differences, titignan natin kung ano yung movement ng mga future taxable at future deductibles natin. Now, magkano yung cumulative temporary differences creating FTAs at the beginning? 800. Magkano yung cumulative temporary differences creating FTA? 500. Ano nangyari sa FTAs natin during the year? Nag-increase, nag-decrease. Di ba nag-decrease siya? Kaya, ang pangalan ko dito ay decrease in future taxable amounts. Pag nag-decrease ang FTA, meaning, ano siya? Nagre-reverse na yung deferred tax liability natin dati. Okay? So, magkano yung decrease? 300,000. So, dahil magre-reverse, instead na i-deduct natin ang FTA, mag a na siya dito. Kasi matataksan na eh. Okay? Ganun lang. Pag mag-re-reverse, babalik ta rin nyo rin yung sign. Kaya, mag a na yung FTAs natin. Gets? Next. What, what about the FDAs? Magkano yung FDAs nung beginning? 1.2 million. Magkano FDAs at the end of the year? 1.6. Ano nangyari? Nag-increase. Pag nag-increase ang FDA, ano yan? Creation of deferred tax assets. Okay? So, magkano ang increase? 400,000. So, dahil nag-create nag ulit siya ng FDA, edi, ano ang mangyayari sa kanya? mag add siya. Kasi creation siya ng DTA. Tandaan nyo yung ruling natin kanina sa problem 1. Okay? Hindi siya nag-reverse, nag-create pa lalo. Therefore, magkano yung total temporary differences natin? 700,000. Parehong add kasi. Therefore, paki-add yung 700,000 sa 5.1 million natin. 5.8 million ang taxable income. Okay? Ang taxable income is 5.8 million. So, for number 1, tinatanong tayo ng current tax expense. That is... 5.8 million times tax rate of 40%, our answer for number 1 is 2.32 million. Number 2, how much is the total tax expense? Pwede ba natin gamitin yung formula ko? Yes! Kasi pareho naman yung current and future tax rates. Therefore, income subject to tax of 5.1 million, multiplier ng 40%. That is, 2.04 million. That's your number 2. Okay? Number 3. What is the deferred tax asset to be presented in the 2018 balance sheet? Pag tinanong tayo ng ganito, ang basihan natin would be cumulative ones na. Okay? Sanang tingin, beginning end, dapat sa end na. Dapat sa end na. So, magkano ang ang uh, deferred tax asset natin? That is, 1.6 million times 40%. So, 
Answer, 640,000. Number four, for your deferred tax liability, the same manner for number three, dyan siya sa at the end pa rin. Future taxable of 500,000 multiplied by 40%, you will have your DTL of 200,000. Are we clear? Okay. Ang tawag natin sa method na ito is income statement method or approach. Tinitignan natin yung galaw ng uh, temporary differences that creates future taxable future deductibles. Diba? Okay. So we are done with your problem number two. Problem number three tayo. Walrus Company provided the following information at year end. So given sa atin, apat na as uh, in the, uh, balance sheet accounts. Accounts receivable, motor vehicle, provision, deposit received in advance. Di ba yung problem number 2 natin, naka-income statement approach tayo? So this time, i-apply natin ang balance sheet approach naman. Pag sinabi kasi balance sheet approach, mas naka-focus tayo sa balance sheet accounts kesa sa income statement accounts. Okay, ano ba tanong sa atin? What amount should be reported as deferred tax liability for number 1 and deferred tax for number 2, pakipalitan na lang yan ang deferred tax asset. Hindi ko siya napansin dyan. Okay? So, yung number 2, deferred tax asset. At dapat yan. Sige. So, paano natin i-analyze kung magkano magiging deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset natin? So, ayan, di ba? Kinuha ko na kagad yung difference between the carrying amount and tax base. Na-discuss ko na rin ito kanina sa first video natin. Ayan. So, for accounts receivable, may difference daw sila na 250000 For motor vehicle, 400000 Then, for the provision, 120 And advanced deposits, 150 Ang gagawin natin dito, ikaklassify natin kung future taxable ba ito or future deductible. Paano natin malalaman, sir? Titignan natin kung ano yung nagkukos ng difference. O, oh, sige. For accounts receivable, ano ang nagkukos ng difference sa kanila? That is, the allowance for doubtful accounts. An allowance for doubtful debts of 250000 has been raised against AR for accounting purposes, but such debts are deductible only when written off as uncollectible. So, ibig sabihin, under accounting, nag-report daw tayo ng allowance for doubtful accounts na 250. Kaso, ayaw patanggapin ng BIR sa ngayon, Kasi, wala pa daw actual write-off. So, ano ang gagawin natin para rito kay allowance for doubtful accounts? Since nakabad its expense yan, kailangan natin siya i-add back. Therefore, dahil add back, nasa future deductible amount natin siya ilalagay. Next, anong nagkukos ng difference kay motor vehicle? That is, the depreciation. Ilang porsyento daw yung depreciation rate ng accounting? Ilang porsyento yung for tax? For accounting, 15%. For tax, 25%. So, since mas malaki yung depreciation rate ng tax, kailangan daw natin mag-deduct ng additional depreciation, which is 400,000. Dahil mag-deduct tayo, future taxable ang lagay natin. Next, warranties. But nagkaroon ng difference between carrying amount and tax base. That is because warranty costs are deductible only when paid. Since nasa provision pa lang siya nakalagay, it is understood na hindi pa ito bayad. Nag-accrue lang tayo. ba? So dahil nag-accrue, kailangan nating tanggalin yan sa expenses natin. So dahil mag a add back ulit tayo, future deductible amount ang lagay ng warranty provision natin. Okay? Last one. For the advanced deposits, the deposits are taxable when received. Now, since nailagay daw natin siya sa advanced deposits, meaning, ano siya, natanggap na. So, ibig sabihin, taxable na kaagad yan ngayon. So, dahil taxable, ia add natin yan sa accounting income natin. 
kasi hindi yan naka-report sa accounting income in the first place. Nasa liability siya. So, dahil mag a future deductible ang lagay natin. Okay? So, tapos na tayo. Summarize lang natin. Magkano total FTA? Magkano total FDA? So, for your future taxable amount, 400,000. For future deductible amount, 520,000. Then, simply, pakimultiply paki lang sila ng tax rate, which is the 30%, para makuha natin si DTL DTA. O, oh, magkano ang deferred tax liability natin? That is, based on future taxable, that is 120,000. Then, for your deferred tax asset, nakabase yan sa future deductible, kaya ang sagot natin ay 156,000 for deferred tax asset. So, number one is letter C. Then, for number two is letter DOG. Yung number two, ha, wag, nyo, wag nyo kalimutan, pakipalitan na lang siya ng deferred tax asset instead na deferred tax liability. Oh, last problem. That's the fourth problem. Oh, maikli na lang, di ba? Mabilis lang tayo dito kasi may isa pa akong ipupunto rito. So, you are provided the following information for the year 2018. Ayan, reported net income, permanent differences, temporary differences. Okay. So, number one, tinatanong tayo ng current tax expense 2018 and number two, total tax expense 2018. What amount and number three, what amount should be presented as deferred tax asset? Okay. Yan. Uh, dinerecho ko na kaagad sa income subject to tax since I trust na alam nyo na kung paano kinocompute ang income subject to tax. Okay? Next. Account naman natin mga temporary differences natin. So, taxable temporary differences is 200,000. Deductible temporary differences is 40,000. So, magkano ang total temporary? 160,000. Now, Paki ano nga, uh, paki observe, income subject to tax, 95,000. Total temporary differences na ide-deduct pa natin 160. Ano sa tingin niyo ang magiging taxable amount natin dito? Positive, negative. Nagiging negative siya. Anong tawag natin sa negative taxable amount? That is what you call nolco or net operating loss carry over. Nol ko ang tawag natin dyan. Certain na taxan ba natin ang loss? For the current period, no. Hindi natin tinataxan ang loss. Kaya, ang sagot natin for number one, current tax expense, zero tayo. Number one, ang sagot ha, current tax expense is zero. Kasi, naka-loss na yung taxable amount. di ba? Pero it doesn't mean, wala talaga tayong tax expense. Tandaan nyo, Meron tayong temporary differences. Now, how much is the total tax expense 2018? Kukumpute natin. Current tax expense, 0. Add deferred tax liability. 30,000 times, 30% tayo. 60,000, then less deferred tax asset. Paano kukumpute yung deferred tax asset? Sir, alam na namin. Deductible temporary difference times 30%. Answer, kulang pa. Why? May nol ko eh. Kung natatandaan niyo yung discussion ko kanina kay Deferred Tax Asset, binabanggit niya yung operating loss carry forward. Ang operating loss carry forward, nol ko yun. So, ang computation ng Deferred Tax Asset natin ay deductible temporary difference of 40,000, pati yung nol ko, i-add mo na. Kasi ang nol ko, under tax rules, kini-carry over yan for a certain number of periods. ba? So, since that will be a benefit kasi mababawasan ang taxable income in the future years, kasali yan sa computation ng deferred tax asset. Alright? So, magkano yung total? 105,000. Yan ang ipang multiply natin ng 30%. So, deferred tax asset, 31,500. So, paki-minus, magkano total tax natin? 
Okay? So, our final answer for total tax expense, number 2 is 28,500. Pwede nyo ring gawin dyan is simply multiply income subject to tax by 30%. Pareho pa rin makukuha nyo, 28,500. Alright? O, oh, last one. How much is the deferred tax asset? Nasagot na natin, 31,500. Okay? Nakuha ba tayo? Deferred tax asset is 31,500. So, tapos na natin ang problem 4. Tapos na rin natin ang lecture. So, thank you for listening. God bless and stay safe always.